I have a website I'm working on here that needs a header still, and so I thought I'd use the header tool to do that. The header tool is found under the advanced set of tools, and again, I may have said this before, just because something's in the advanced category doesn't mean it's difficult to work with. It means that it has advanced features. It does a lot of really cool things for you. And the page header tool is no exception. To use it, it's really simple. You just grab the tool and draw a box on the canvas anywhere. It doesn't matter where you draw it because the page header tool is going to automatically move this into the right position. Watch, I'll just draw a box. It doesn't matter what shape I make it either. And when I let go, boom, it makes a header. It does matter how tall I make it because I can decide the height by changing this. And in my case, I'm just going to make it sit right on top of that black layer right there where my menu is. So this is going to be my header for this website. Um, one of the things I want to do is design this header to match uh, the look of my website. So I'm going to double click on it and bring up the page header properties where I can style it. I'm going to choose an image. I've got an image I want to use for this. And so I'm going to click on this folder and here's the background image I want to use. Click open and click OK. Now I've got a header here that I want to use. And in fact, I'm going to stretch it down a little bit more. There we go. And uh, tighten that up a little bit. Okay, so what I've done is I've just made a header. That's pretty simple. I think I'm going to add one more thing here. I've got an image I want to put inside this header. By the way, this header is technically a layer. So if you've worked with layers, you can see why that's got a blue highlight around it. It's telling me that the image I'm moving into this layer is correctly going inside. Okay, I'm going to let go. So this header tool basically is just a quick way to make a layer header, but it's got some really cool features. So let's F5 here and see what it looks like. I haven't done anything too complicated. You'll notice what it did for me is, of course, it made the header go to the top of the page. It also made it infinite by default. I didn't have to go set the relative horizontal sizing like you normally do with a layer. It automatically did it for me. And so this is a relative horizontal sizing layer, which means that this background this whole header is going to stretch and accommodate any size browser. As you can see, it goes on infinitely. Let's close this and let's mess with some of the settings. I'm going to double click and bring up the page header properties. The first thing I'm going to do is change the alignment. Right now it aligns left. You'll notice that this image stayed over to the left. That's because of the alignment. I'm going to change this to center just to show you the difference. Click F5 to preview it. Watch what happens when we center the content. You'll see that it does line up with the rest of my website that's also centered. And you'll see that that looks a little bit better. Most of the time you're going to want to center your content. So because the page is centered and now the content in the header is centered, they're going to stay together a little bit better based on the size of the browser window. Okay, one more thing we'll do. Let's double click on it again. And let's see what stretch does. Stretch is a little different and probably a rarer use, but this is what stretch does. And in my case, I probably wouldn't want to do it. You'll notice that the picture does look a little bit stretched because it's all the way over here, and yet it's all the way over here. Watch what happens when I change the size of the browser. It actually stretches the content with it. That's kind of an interesting effect. There may be an application for you to do that in this particular demonstration, this particular website. That's not something I would want to use, but that's there because there will be times when you would want to. I'm going to double click. Let's change this back to center. That's what I like. And we've been using the default mode, but I'm going to show you another mode. This one's called fixed. I'm just going to click OK and click the F5 button. And you won't see any change at first, but here's what a fixed header does. I'm going to scroll down the page, and you'll see that my header stays fixed in place. Now this is a really great effect, and people have asked, how can I make my navigation or my header bar stay in place? And this is exactly how you do it. If I wanted to do that with my navigation, I would have put it up inside the header. In my case, I didn't. I have a navigation layer right here. And if I were to put this up inside the header, then it would stay in place. And that would be another way of using a fixed page header. But you can see no matter where we go down the page, it stays fixed. Let's close that and look at some more options. That's the fixed mode. And now let's look at the full screen mode. Full screen is interesting. It opens up some other attributes. As soon as I chose full screen, you'll notice that the animation highlighted here. And there's a delay and there's a particular type of animation we can choose, either fade or slide. In fact, I'm going to choose fade just for demonstration purposes. We'll leave the delay at 2000. That's actually two seconds. And click OK. This is what full screen mode does. I'm going to click F5 
and it's gone. Until the mouse goes back into place, it brings the header in full view, but it does it by fading. In fact, if I leave the object, this is what this does. So it's responding to the mouse based on that animation. Okay, let's try that again. I'm going to change that to a slide instead of a fade. And again, the, de the delay is a two second. You can change that if you want. You can change the duration of it. You can mess with those features to uh, suit your needs. But let's just for the demonstration, I'll put my mouse up here. Did you see what it did? Let's go back to it and it slides back down. Just one more kind of cool thing you can do with your header. So that's kind of fun. I'm going to double click on it. I'm going to set this back to default. Uh, floating is very similar to default, but we'll use the default center. There's no animation in that particular case. And we're going to just leave it that way. Some of the things you can do and you can mess around with, of course, you can also add more content to it. You can make the um, in front of content or behind content. In my case, if I do that, it'll disappear. I don't want it behind anything. I want it in the front. So we'll keep it right there. Of course, the styles remain the same. We can change this to a solid color. You can make a border and do anything you want for the styling. You can have shadows, trigger events with this, and use the CSS3 animation with this great tool. Anyway, that's how you make a header using the page header tool in 90 Second Website Builder.